Weber. <clears throat> Sorry. Welcome. How's the Weber down there? Uh, here we had a, a clear, bright, sunny, crispy day at 13 degrees centigrade in Vancouver, British Columbia. It was a wonderful day. No chemtrails. Everybody was celebrating. It was a banner day on the 2nd of March, 2015. And tomorrow, Netanyahu on the 3rd of March will fail at his attempt to ignite World War III. That's my prediction, because the positive timeline has landed. What do you mean by the, uh, the positive timeline has landed? Is there like a couple of timelines running congruent throughout history or whatever, and certain ones are full of scumbags and the success of scumbaggery and certain <laughs> are the opposite? Well, uh, almost could be. Uh, people can go to our, our website at positivefuture.info, and there you'll see the positive future equation that uh, has emerged from uh, data. And the positive future equation is positive future equals positive timeline plus unity consciousness. And what we've been able to note is a pattern that emerged after December 21st, 2012. And what occurred then is that a new holographic timeline, a positive timeline, uh, emerged permanently to uh, displace the former catastrophic timeline that was based on duality consciousness, I win, you lose, uh, that was the ruling timeline for this time-space hologram that we're in. And that's why so many of the plans of uh, the, the matrix powers, uh, namely uh, World War III, namely uh, uh, the, you know, Ebola pandemic, namely their depopulation program to attempt to get the population down from 7 billion to 500 million as set out in the Georgia Guidestones is failing. And it's failing because it's unity consciousness. We are one that is the prevailing frequency under uh, in our time-space hologram. We know now that uh, uh, our universe uh, is actually a time-space hologram composed of multiple timeline, timelines here at our third density, which is the density that we inhabit. Uh, we're incarnating souls, non-locally based in the afterlife dimensions and incarnating here in our avatars as Vinnie Eastwood, Alfred Weber, and everybody else listening or watching this show. So uh, uh, through great grace, the, interdim the interdimensional portal of our universe uh, as of December 21st, 2012, began broadcasting uh, waves of unity consciousness and the timeline uh, shifted from a catastrophic one, which would have predicted World War III, it would have predicted a global coastal event, which three different uh, 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 remote viewings, one a chronovisor, uh, a chronovisor probe by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, had undertaken in 1971, a colleague of mine, Andrew D. Bashago, uh, had undertaken that on behalf of the Defense Advanced Project R Research Agency. In 1971, he, he did a uh, third dimension, uh, a 3D chronovisor probe inside of a hologram and saw the, encountered the uh, U.S. Supreme Court building, Washington, D.C., under 100 feet of brackish water. Similarly, another colleague of mine, Dr. Courtney Brown in uh, 2010 assembled the largest uh, number of military trained remote viewers in history in uh, 2010. And they were going to do just a regular study of what the effects of global warming were, thinking that, oh, well, we'll have a few less acreage of beach, beachfront property. And instead, they found in June 2013 
a global coastal event that left the Sydney Opera House underwater. And along with all other coastal cities, including Washington, where they found the U.S. Congress directly across from the Supreme Court building underwater. Uh, none of these events occurred, and uh, Courtney Brown found that immediately prior to June 2013, that that event occurred, but it occurred in a different dimension because the catastrophic timeline uh, is no longer ruling in the dimension that we're inhabiting now, but rather a new positive timeline. So the equation, positive future equals positive timeline plus unity consciousness is the equation that governs the, uh, one could call it virtual reality that we're in. It's as though, uh, Vinny, that on uh, December 21st, 2012, somebody changed the video card of the video game that we're in. And we used to be in a video game called War, Disease, Crime, and Poverty. And somebody changed it to Landing Paradise on Earth. And most of the 7 billion people still think that we're on war, disease, crime, and poverty, but the video game has changed. It's landing paradise on earth. So everybody's scrambling to try and figure out, are we in heaven or hell? Well, objectively, scientifically, our infrastructure is that of landing paradise on earth. And uh, uh, the, it's, it's a struggle because all the trillions of dollars of forces that have spent three trillion dollars building underground bases to protect them from uh, all sorts of catastrophes that aren't going to happen are still trying to make them happen, but they can't get it off the ground. Kind of like that relationship with that girl you really liked in high school, but it's just not going to work out, son. I think so. You know, it, it, it just is not in this timeline. And, and uh, that is why all of the pedophilia and ritual uh, child sacrifice and ritual ch child trafficking networks are now getting busted and now being exposed everywhere from, the, uh, from where they originate, which is the, the, uh, the, the contracts between the Nazis and the Dracos and the Orion Greys, which were signed in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, uh, and then they were signed with the Americans in the Roosevelt I, I administration. About, I heard about that one, and I, I, don't, I don't know what it was. Uh, there's, there's, there's remarkably more UFO abductions in the United States than the entire rest of the world combined, like by far. And I heard one person uh, allege that that's because the treaty that the United States signed with the Greys included harvesting rights to the U.S. population. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 basically it, and that's why uh, uh, the U.S. has 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 had to suffer this is because of uh, of these treaties that were signed in 1933 in Balboa, Panama. And uh, uh, out of those treaties then, which were linked up... Let me, let me guess. These treaties in, uh, that were signed in Balboa, they must have been about Rocky. Uh, <laughs> I know that we're going to get into it. The last time you and I did a show, I think, Vinny, or one of the last times, we were both laughing so hard, we could hardly talk. Because you, uh, you, you talked about the, Europe, the European Union, but you mispronounced it, and you called it the European Union. And Something. I out yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and the, uh, the, the here we are ta talking about these, he, here we are ta talking about these, these incredibly serious, heart-wrenching problems. However, I have everything written down so I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to let you do that to me tonight, Vinny, with your incredibly wry sense of, of uh, humor. Put it that way. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're not going to get caught up in the moment. Please continue <laughs> about the Balboa Treaty. Well, uh, uh, so uh, 
with that treaty, uh, and there were more or less identical treaties signed between the Nazis and the US, because essentially uh, they were both parties. Uh, it was the identical parties running both countries. I mean, uh, uh, it was um, uh, uh, Prescott Bush and uh, uh, through the Fritz Tyson Bank and Skull and Bones, which is the American establishment which financed Hitler starting in 1923 uh, and the Nazi party. So uh, those same interests were the interests that signed the agreements with the uh, Dracorapillians and the Orion Greys. Um, uh, the, uh, and the interests were these. Um, if you look at Skull and Bones, which was the common denominator, which is a secret society from my alma mater, Yale, uh, Yale, Yale, um, the public story of Yale of uh, Skull and Bones was that it was founded in 1832 as an offshoot of a German secret society called the Brotherhood of Death. But in fact, it was founded in 1776 at Yale as the second chapter of the Illuminati, which was founded in 1775 by a Jesuit, uh, which we know are essentially a morphed Babylonian cult, satanic Babylonian cult. Um, and the Bavarian Illuminati, the first chapter, was founded by uh, a Jesuit in 1775. And through Skull and Bones, it was founded in that the second chapter was founded in 1776 as a way to capture and bring down the American Republic, which had just declared its, um, its uh, uh, independence at, um, in that same year, uh, 1776. So uh, these are some of the some of the uh, uh, hidden avenues and the what I call dimensional ecology and how the practices of the Dracoreptilians of having of having human sacrifice and of requiring human sacrifice with its treaty counterparts, both in the Nazi government and in the US government, which it carries out to this day, we know from witnesses in the underground bases. So- um, Can I ask- Yeah. Does this have something to do with the fact that the United States has been in existence for 200 years and only not been at war for about 23 of them? Yes, be, be, because now, uh, in fact, it was made official uh, as a platform with the Act of 1871, where in 1871, a city-state was established uh, when uh, 10 square miles of Virginia and Maryland were taken and um, dedicated to the city-state of the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. And that was at the behest of the Vatican and the city of London. And so now that, that became, Washington, D.C. became the third city-state in the three city-state empire of the Vatican, the city of London, and 
Washington, D.C., the District of, Co of Columbia, that, that 10, um, 10 square mile city state. And, and in, that, in that three city state empire, which I call that Lanusa, like Medusa, um, the specialty of the city of London was the finances, the money. The specialty of the Vatican was the the um, spiritual mind control, and the uncle power. Yeah, and the specialty of Washington was the military arm. So that's why the U.S. is in perpetual war because it is the military arm of that Lanusa. A well, creature. I ask, isn't, isn't this the Trilateral Commission, the one started by David Rockefeller that actually brokered the agreement between these three city-states, city or am I, does it have nothing to do with it? Uh, the Trilateral Commission is one of the kind of technocratic uh, uh, clubs that came along in the 20th century as part of Agenda 21 to give more patina and, uh, you know, sort of Wall Street Journal, New York Times, uh, UN, uh, you know, kind of gloss to the, uh, to the global enslavement and depopulation uh, uh, agenda of basically just a think tank for the uh, for the rich and powerful to rub shoulders drink champagne and uh, come up with a plan to mess up everybody else's life yes yes but the but the basic structure was laid in with the act of 1871 which brought the third city state into power the district of columbia and and uh so basically that brought what we call the USA Corporation. Right now, Americans are under the illusion that they have a country, but they no longer have a country. They are run by a corporation known as the USA Corporation. And um, uh, that is a corporation which has the franchise over the territory of the US and its and its population. It has a president, uh, which it elects every four years. And, uh, but it's the affairs of the city state, which are its primary business, which is the wars that it fights on behalf of the Vatlanusa three city state empire. And uh, uh, so that, that is why it has the longest elections uh, on Earth, here in Canada. Sorry. And oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the show that just keeps on trucking, like K. Billy sounds of the Super Seventies. And my very special guest is Alfred Labramont Weber the Third. Now, we were we, we were heading off to last segment. I was talking about the inherent traumatizing nature of even listening. To this content about all the pedophile cults and how they cover up, what they do to families, what they do to children. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably say do it sparingly if you're going to do it at all. It's, it's nasty, horrific stuff. And I hope that you don't, like me, uh, get so depressed that you can't work for like two months. <laughs> right, right, really. This kind of stuff happens. Uh, I've found investigators going into this like shoving their head right down into this rabbit hole, they kind of need trauma counselling a lot of the time. And then the trauma counsellors that are counselling them wind up needing caseworkers for themselves. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, just, just buy a be warned. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And my very special guest, Alfred Labramont Weber, welcome back. Thank you. Well, you know, so, pe people should, should really know what is going on and I and I'd like to meet read from this uh, 
anonymous uh, report from what's happening at Hampstead. And it's exactly what you were talking about, Vinny. So you may want to put on some earplugs or, you know, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, because I'm going to read from this report and people should be warned that you may want to turn your volume down. Okay, I'm going to start reading. Babies are supplied regularly for the rituals, abused, tortured with the rat traps, dropped on the floor, often bleed, then killed. They put them to sleep by injecting, sleep, slit baby's throat, drain blood, drink the blood, and then cook the baby by either roasting or frying. The meat is eaten by the leader, Dr. Dearman, teachers, 20 special children, and their parents. The baby's sexual abuse and sacrifice are going on Thursday. Wednesday is a big sex day. Thursday on Wednesdays, my children, Elise and Gabriel, have been abused by at least 60 to 70 people, including 20 special children. The children are, are taught to abuse each other. And I like to say that Elise and Gabriel, the two whistleblower children that are now in state care, they have been medically examined and the medical examination confirmed that they have been sexually abused. Um, I was wondering why my children were often pre pretending to be sick and refused to go to school on Wednesdays. There are four secret rooms in the church. This is Christ Church. Christ Church. Talk about reversals. You know, they, they reversal the name Christ, where the cult members perform the rituals. The rituals involve special costumes. Children wear 10 to 13 baby skulls, sometimes with blood and hair still on the skull. Everybody has skulls worn around the neck, on the breast, front, private, belly, knees, arms. All wear shoes made of baby skin by Felix, Daniel, owner of the shoe repair in Finchley Road, Underground Station. Max, sport tech shop on Finchley Road. These are all shops in the Hampstead area. This is all, this is all, it's like the Peyton place of Satanism. This is, this is Hampstead. This has been going on for two centuries. They, they, you know, this is what they do. Babies are supplied from all over the world. They buy them, inject, and send by TNT, DHL service, so the parents bring them from other parts of the world. For example, Sophie's parents bring them from America, Hawaii, Vanessa, Clark, and Lindsay's mother from South Africa. Cartney's parents bring babies from Portugal, Spain. Millie's parents bring babies from Guyana, China, India, America. Baby sacrifice, blood drinking, dancing with the baby skulls happen in the church on Tuesdays and Thursday. Main day is Wednesday. Ritual performance is at 11 a.m. in the secret church rooms. Now, when you have a monarch, a head of state that embodies the nation of the United Kingdom, that everybody... Oh, it's her birthday. Oh, what she's wearing. Oh, she's so lovely. Who is a blood drinker and a child sacrificer? Well, it goes all the way down through the entire society. And that's what you have after two centuries is, a, is, a, is, a, is, is an entire society that's drinking blood that's reinforced by the CIA and by the MK Ultra and by the NSA and by the Dracos who are now technologizing it through HARP and through the, and through the uh, transhumanist agenda, which is implanting people through the chemtrails and HARP to make them robots so that, you know, there'll be robots that do this while the last generation of humans are robotized before they're, you know, totally wiped out and become... Uh, just to expand on that uh, a little, uh, in case you don't know, uh, and like some microscope analysis of the chemtrail dust and things of that nature and these, these little kind of elastic cylinders and they appear to be biotechnology or uh, nanotechnology I think is the specific term for it and they self-replicate and what's apparently been going on is that these things are so small that you can just breathe them up 
and they're finding their way into the entire body and building themselves and replicating themselves along your bone and your and your bloodstream and your and, and your nervous system and everything like that. And apparently they can also receive radio signals when a signal is put up. So one day there might just be a little ping and everybody's doing whatever somebody wants. That's kind of what I've uh, come to understand about it. Is that pretty much close to the mark? Or have I totally misinterpreted what's going on here? No, I, I think that that's true. And that is happening now. I've had reports. That's exactly what they call gang stalking is. And gang stalking is when a person who is doesn't have their implants activated because right now the implants consist of nanobots, which are in the chemtrails. Uh, uh, and 80% of humanity now is implanted from the chemtrails because that's what people breathe is chemtrails and the nanobots are breathed in they they go into the bloodstream they jump the blood-brain barrier they go into the brain and uh, they they become uh, as you stated nanobots and are entrained into banks of sub supercomputers that then process the software uh, and the programming from HARP. Um, and and, and uh, the way that gang stalking works where is where a, a, a target, say, is a person who's, who either doesn't have any uh, implants or whose implants ha haven't become active. You can be on a, a, in a park or on a university campus or in an office where you're working, where you're the last person and everybody else in the office has become a gang stalker and then people start going around and doing all these weird things around you because they're being manipulated by the banks of supercomputers like robots. Well, there was this person who was on a, on a university campus and they were being gang stalked by all these gang stalkers and suddenly there was a power outage, and it turned out that the gang stalkers were being run by the police antennas from the signals of the police antennas were activating their implants. And there was a power out outage that knocked out the police antennas. And all of a sudden, the, the gang stalkers just looked around at each other, and I'm I'm quoting from the person, and they, they looked around at each other and they said, what are we doing here? And they ran like cockroaches. That's happening now. And, and it, it, if you ever get gang stalked, it's just people who are being driven by, by the computers of the New World Orders who are activating their implants. We're kind of at the interim stage now. And, and, and so, so the pedophilia networks, the function of the pedophilia networks and the satanic ritual net networks is one of accelerating because that weakens the uh, soul and that destroys the soul, the human soul, which is the main line of defense against the robotization of humans uh, by this... Uh, by this force, uh, and so the function of this, of these global, of these, of this, of this global pedophilia networks, which are originally driven by the technological transhumanist agenda and MK Ultra CIA networks, which drive the power networks of the monarchies and the churches um, and the legislatures and the parliaments and the governments. And the way they do it is to turn them into all pedophiles. And that makes it much easier to turn them to into control robots. Them. Because well, not you just destroy that, their but souls. Also if, they, if they also speak out about anything, they can get... <laughs> just say, bro, we can expose you to the public as a pedophile, yeah, and you're sure. going to speak out against this draconian legislation we're asking you to pass? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a smart idea, son. 
Yeah. yeah. In fact, a dude in the UK, I think it was, um, it wasn't Pie and Mash Films, but somebody they interviewed um, said that there were a thousand or fifteen hundred uh, uh, known pedophiles that have either been in the UK Parliament or are currently in it. I think there's like 300 sitting known pedophiles in Parliament right now, as you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I.e., I, I, the only way that you can get into Parliament is to be a pedophile because those institutions are controlled by the pedophile networks. And so mm -hmm. all of this... It's is just like MK Ultra back in, the, back in the day, ladies and gentlemen. If they want some dirt on you, they'll just create some. And you don't really get into the echelons of power unless you've been in it. We'll be right back after the break with Alfred Labramont Weber. Thank you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the fastest two hours in talk radio. It's the Vinnie Eastwood Show, broadcasting in HD and ADHD for the all listening orgasm pleasure. And my very special guest is Alfred Labramont Weber. Is it the third? Aren't yes. You like the third yes, in a long line yes, of Alfreds. Uh, yes, my grandfather was, my father was, and I am, and my son is. Oh, well, there you go. So there's like four. There's the there's the fourth uh, iteration going around. I hope it's a lot better than the, many of the fourth sequels that we're seeing from the long running movie franchises that have been coming out <laughs> over the years. Okay, it. I'm, I'm not sure if generations work that way. If anything, it's probably worse. Um, I'm I'm certainly a lot worse than my dad. You know, there's just there's just no comparison. Okay. Well, anyway, we were right in the middle of the Draco reptilians and the goodness knows what else. Now, of course, these, these are subjects that I, I draw a lot of flack for even discussing. I mean, in a lot of cases, the things that I talk about and the things and the people who I'm talking to, I don't know for 100% certain exactly what's going on or who's telling the truth or why. I just want to talk about them so I can relieve my ignorance is that a bad thing? It probably is. But anyway, Alfred, if you wouldn't mind, please continue. Yeah. Okay. So what we did is we, we, we set out uh, to investigate independently what are the real sources of these ritual child sacrifice and pedophilia networks. And what we found, and people can go to our news portal, newsinsideout.com. And what we found there uh, was that the evidence uh, led to uh, uh, interconnected MKUltra, pedophile, ritual child sacrifice, human hunting parties, and abuse networks, and child trafficking networks that are interlinked with the Vatican, the Drug Enforcement Agency, the CIA, WAC and HUT, and the Bilderbergers in parliaments, churches, governments, schools, courts, child welfare institutions, and the media. The reality about pedophile and ritual child sacrifice networks um, that we found in this research is remarkable. And it suggests that a prime mover of global pedophile, child sacrifice, and child trafficking networks may have originated as a cooperative enterprise, as, as, as we just discussed, between the Draco Reptilians and the U.S. and the Nazi governments. Uh, going back to 1933 and prior with the treaties, uh, and uh, that has the U.S. government MKUltra entity as a major technological driver. Of course, after World War II, uh, uh, the U.S. took over the, the, the Nazi intelligence and scientific infrastructure, and also they took over its contacts with, with its Draco reptilian and other ETs that came over to the CIA. So therefore, it took over its contacts with the Dracos, with the... Uh, with the races that were insisting as part of the treaty on human sacrifice. So that's why we have the continuation of the human sacrifice uh, uh, requirements in the treaties where the Dracos would insist on human sacrifice with the U.S. 
government agents, contractors. So it's uh, when when they would meet in in underground ba bases. So and it's kind of like meet the new boss, same as the old boss, sort of thing. Yeah, and and that's and that's how this thing is propagating throughout the entire world. It's actually from a larger species. And there are all sorts of other influences uh, from the giants, the, the Homo capensis, uh, what we call the cone heads, what we call the pumpkin heads, with people with larger brains who are also cannibals, who, who also engaged in human sacrifice because they thought Homo sapiens, us humans, to be inferior. Um, and it appears as though MKUltra and the Draco connection really uh, uh, cemented itself during the Franklin Delano Roosevelt administration starting in 1933 and was further cemented during post-World War II Operation Paperclip of German intelligence and its Draco Orion Gray networks that were then incorporated into CIA. Now it would appear now, and I'm and I'm reading from our report that we concluded after bringing together all of this research that includes extensive files on European-based pedophile and child sacrifice networks that were provided as to us by a member of the Belgian Parliament who read these out on the floor of the Belgian Parliament that went up into the monarchies of Belgium, uh, the governments, the Dutch monarchies, and others, and as well as the Vatican. It would appear now from the evidence that this overall enterprise driving the global pedophile child sacrifice and child trafficking networks can be termed the driving force be behind the transhumanist agenda or the New World Order. The U.S. government. This would explain to me why um, people who are trying to expose this and people who are victims of it, who fight back and that kind of thing, um, they receive the most flack out of any <coughs> other group of activists that I've seen. I mean, I, I've talked to people who've had their their children taken here in New Zealand by Child Youth and Family Services. The uh, equivalent in the United States would be CPS, where you're like nine times more likely to be abused by CPS than your own parents that they took that you, they took you from. And it seems that there's a there's a big shell game going on. So you've got the uh, general low down elites or what or whatever you know. There'd be like uh, top judges, lawyers, police, and things of that nature who have this this terrible pedophile habit. And naturally, these all happen to be the same people where you go to for help if your child gets taken, and they go, eh, "Nothing to see here, nothing to see here." And these people who fight against the system get thwarted at every turn. And it would make sense that this is actually a central mechanism to the survival of some kind of anti-human agenda, or at least to me anyway, because there's nothing human about abusing children and covering it up perpetually. Yeah, yeah. And, and this case, I mean, the principle that you're stating has really been proved, has really proven itself and is proving itself as we speak in the case of Hampstead, UK, uh, with with the famous Hampstead Heath, uh, and uh, which is famous as the scene where Bram Stoker wrote Dracula, and it's a scene where many of the scenes from Dracula were actually set there, uh, and this is a very affluent. Uh, neighborhood uh, in the outskirts of London, UK, uh, and uh, essentially what what has what has happened there uh, is that it, it is that um, uh, uh, through the actions of a couple of whistleblower kids, and then data releases by an organization calling itself anonymous, though though it turns out not to be the famous 
organization by the name anonymous that we know, uh, the entire Hampstead area has really become a hub, an international hub for ritual child sacrifice and 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 pedophilia, which is being facilitated by the local schools, by local families, uh, which is uh, being facilitated by the local courts, the local police, um, and by the social services. And what appears to be an ironclad rule worldwide is that if a mother discovers that her children are being molested by a pedophile ring and goes to social services or to the police, she will lose her children. And the system is set up so as to blame the parents and capture the children permanently for the pedophile rings. Mm. Uh, in some cases, what I've seen is that we have uh, parents, one parent in the family will indeed be connected to the pedophile ring and they will attempt to squeeze the other parent out of the relationship and that child will then get kind of like um, almost go on the market, whatever. The, the, the remaining parent who's a pedophile will uh, care for their own child and, and apparently there's a kind of loaning situation that kind of goes out, or at least from a couple of uh, people that I've spoken to and what's happened to them and their kids. Yeah, I mean, uh, if we go in depth to the situation that is uh, unfolding in the Hampstead area now, uh, here we have, and I'm, I'm just taking the perspective uh, of a war crimes judge, which I, I have been. And what I see there from the evidence is the serious crimes of murder, infanticide, cannibalism, torture, rape, and sexual abuse all crimes against humanity and forbidden by criminal law in the UK, as well as, well as by the international statute of the International Criminal Court, of which the UK is a signatory. And, and it's, it, it's, it's clear that, that uh, uh, there exists almost a, a hermetic seal uh, in this community of Hampstead, which has been a hub for ritual child sacrifice for several centuries. Uh, and uh, Mel Vey, who is head of the CCN network, uh, who we've interviewed, who lived in Hampstead for five years, has described this very, very aptly, uh, that it, it, the the uh, residents there are involved in a conspiracy of silence, and it may be that other children, other than the whistleblower kids who have come forward, and we only know about them because there was one uh, uh, one legal helper a a a uh, under the UK law uh, who who actually posted uh, some of the videos of the kids talking about this online and now there's a, an Interpol arrest warrant out there there's an Interpol warrant out for her arrest she had to flee the UK along with the mother and now there are Interpol warrants out for their arrests. Uh, may I say, I've found that there's uh, kind of two ways that they keep, can keep people silent. Uh, one is with threats and the other is with bribery. Uh, and then after you bribe them, you threaten them. <laughs> right. You know, so, so it's, it's that, that kind of thing. It's, it's just fear. Fear has been used since the dawn of man 
to keep us in line. Yeah. And you know what you really, really, really actually probably conceivably should be afraid of? Ruthless pedophile scum with trained killers at their hand wanting to hurt you and your family. That's the kind of thing that you can be justified in picking up your family and kids and running to another country from right away kind of thing. Because then they're probably the worst group of scum in the world. And, and not to mention, this is the worst topic in the world, Alfred. You ever notice? Out of all the, all the conspiracies, out of everything I've ever discussed, this is the one that cuts the most deeply. This is the one that is the darkest of them all. And that's why people don't want to hear about it. And for good reason. I only talk about this subject once every couple of months because I found that if I talk about it too much, I get traumatized and I can't talk no more. Oh. You listen to the Vinnie Eastwood show, Alfred Labramont Weber the third is my very special <laughs> guest. And we shall be right back after the break at the Vinnie Eastwood show.com. Alright, that's enough of that. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. It's kind of like pirate radio. There are no rules, just guidelines, really. And my very special guest is... <laughs> I don't know what the hell that accent was. Is <laughs> Alfred Labramont Weber. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you uh, for joining me at such late notice. Now, um, speaking of things that I noticed... Um, you were talking right at the very start of the first segment about this new timeline, this new wave, this new positive energy field with collective consciousness uh, raising up and everything. Um, and what occurred to me is uh, maybe you're right, but then again, in order to prove that you're right, the direct opposite of what you're saying would happen could, should be happening. Does that sound confusing? Of course it does. It means this. If a good thing is about to happen, that means a lot of bad things got to happen right now to get out of the way. Correct. People are going to go crazy. People are going to go nuts. It's going to be, you know, uh, 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 people getting angry at each other for no freaking reason. <laughs> you know, it happens all the time. It, it's, it's almost like there's a, uh, oh, I know exactly what it is. It's detoxification, bro. Have you ever done a detox? How you, your skin breaks out and all these pimples and your back starts hurting and you can't move without groaning. That kind of... Th and then all of a sudden, after a while, you're just like, you know, I don't feel like crap anymore. I actually feel way better than I did before I started feeling like crap. This is quite awesome. That kind of happening to humanity in a sort of broad brush stroke, isn't it? That's a brilliant observation, Vinny. I think that that's a brilliant observation because that's exactly what's happening because all of these things are coming out, out from underneath, from the collective unconscious. And what our research, and people can go again to our news portal, newsinsideout.com, and what our research in this area shows is that the Draco U.S. government, MK Ultra ritual, child sacrifice pedophile complex in turn has infiltrated ruling and controller structures worldwide including churches such as the Vatican the Jesuits the the Talmud uh, the, the whole area of the Talmud the Ang Anglican churches the monarchies especially the UK monarchy the governments especially the USA Corporation government, which we spoke about in the first segment, the intelligence agencies, the military, the corporations, the schools, the civic organization, and the multi-generational families. There are 30 million multi-generational satanic families, 30 million multi generational satanic individuals from multi-generational families in the U.S. alone. And that's a tremendous weight for us to deal with, us the awakening starseeds, to deal with as we're bringing the entire human population along in this frequency ascension. 
Now, now yeah, when you were saying ahead. just before about that long list of all the different institutions that have been uh, taken over yeah. and seized control of and are now being used to abuse children, yeah. what occurred to me is that in order to explain that properly, think of every single organization that you can think of that is, says that it's there to protect children and should be its job. They're the ones doing it. Exactly. Yes, and, and you know, there is now evidence that the largest corporations, the largest private corporation in North, privately held corporation in North America holds satanic ritual sacrifice at its corporate headquarters. Laura <laughs> Eisenhower confirms the existence of cooperative treaties and entities between the United States government and ma manipulative, manipulative extraterrestrials, such as the Draco reptilians and Orion Grays, uh, in in the interview that that we did with her called Laura Magdalene Eisenhower, the ET invasion has already occurred, and governments do not want us to know, and. There are a number of high-profile individuals from these networks for whom he has re reliable eyewitness evidence of, these, of their participation in ritual child sacrifice, blood drinking, and flesh eating. And these include Pope John Paul II, who according to ex-Jesuit Jose Luciano, participated in ritual child sacrifice in an underground bunker 40 meters from the Vatican. Now, this is an issue in the U.S. presidential 2016 campaign, and this is very important for Americans and for the world. The leading Republican and Democratic families involved in the U.S. presidential 2016 campaign, Bush and Clinton families, are both, by the evidence, committed participants in ritual child sacrifice, blood drinking, and pedophilia. According to Juan Glenkopf's evidence, pedophilia parties as part of the CIA MKUltra circuit took place in the White House under George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush. Both Bush Sr. and Bush Jr. participated at Area 51 in ritual human sacrifice, blood drinking, and flesh eating in joint ceremonies with Draco reptilians held in underground facilities as part of a cooperative entity of Draco reptilians and the U.S. military. Both Hillary and this and is why, uh, and this Sorry. is why the feminist movement around the uh, the Bush era had T-shirts that said, "The only Bush I trust is my own." <laughs> you know, you are a good stand-up comedian, <laughs> and that's. You know, what, what, what is it? Hey, and here I am. I've actually sort of shifted the studio around, so I'm actually standing up while I'm doing yeah, it, yeah, doing no, my great. comedies. It's great because... All it took was removing the chair, bro, and I'm suddenly a stand-up comedian. This is the lighter side of genocide so that you are not making light of this because we know that it's going to take you two months to recover from this program. But now I'm going to get to another point. Both Hillary and Bill Clinton have participated, according to this evidence, in ritual child sacrifice and, and are human blood drinkers. While there is no explicit evidence that has emerged of Jeb Bush participating in ritual sacrifice, it is reasonable to expect that Jeb Bush, who is, a, who is the two, uh, 2016 candidate of the Bushes, was aware of such Bush activities and may have participated. Uh, at the very least, as an ethical presidential candidate, Jeb Bush would be expected to denounce ped pedophilia and ritual child sacrifice by his father and brother and any other Bush family members. All 2016 presidential candidates, and you've got to get them on your show and ask them, should be questioned as to whether they have ever participated in pedophilia, ritual child so, uh, sacrifice, Alfred. or child trafficking, or in any of the networks that support this. So, I think I'd have to actually go to them, and they have they have like the private security there, and they say, "Hey, look, Vinny East was coming over with a microphone to ask ask, ask the Clintons some questions," and they go, "Quick, hide behind the bushes." <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 
Here we go. Here we go. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Now, stuff. Well, now yeah, so, so that here, here comes, here comes the actual breakthrough, which was a breakthrough at a conceptual level because now we know what we're aiming for. A new model of the actual planetary driver of pedophile and ritual sacrifice networks. The transhumanist agenda model of pedophilia and child abuse networks is more accurate and factual than a prior model of pedophilia that focuses sole blame on churches such as the Vatican or monarchies such as the UK, Dutch, or Belgian throne. You know, so, oh, that Dutch queen, you know, they have these hunting things. This prior model of pedophile networks actually diverts attention away from the transhumanist agenda, which is the actual current planetary driver of pedophile and ritual child sacrifice networks. The transhumanist agenda can be defined as, colon, a complex cooperative entity originating in the Draco Reptilians and CIA U.S. government using MKUltra technology that now appears to have expanded out into a planetary infrastructure around the NSA, National Security Agency, and contracting agencies around the world, along with a dedicated grid of HARP installation, chemtrails, supergrids, supercomputers, nanobots, nanochips to be the prime mover entity responsible for driving pedophile and ritual child sacrifice networks worldwide in power institutions such as the Vatican, Jesuits, Talmudists, Zionists, churches, monarchies, governments, intelligence, military, police, schools, and families. Pedophile and ritual child sacrifice activities and networks worldwide appear to facilitate establishing a global power base in these institutions for the ultimate robotization of humanity. The overall goal of the transhumanist agenda is a robotization of humans and the substitution of a manipulatory artificial intelligence, AI, for the human soul and source connection. So that's the ultimate goal, is to weaken your soul through pedophilia and ritual child sacrifice to robotize humans and then to substitute a manipulatory artificial intelligence for the god and to manipulate the robots that way. So that's what we've discovered. So that they, they've actually produced a machine that reacts to human soul consciousness and they're trying to destroy the soul consciousness so that it can be controlled instead of being free. Yeah. And, and that this will become a planet driven by artificial intelligence and, and that AI will be God. And, well, and thanks, that's, well, thank God for that. Have you talked to the average voter, bro? <laughs> it was already what? being run on artificial intelligence. There's no real intelligence left. Well, sorry, you, I, I missed all of that. I, I didn't get it. Well, what I was what I was saying is, thank God it's going to be run by artificial intelligence because as of as of today, if you go and talk out to average uh, every average voter, you'd know that no real intelligence exists anymore. Well, my my working hypothesis is this, and and you know I know that there are a lot of doubters and everything, is that we're on a positive timeline, and that it's that. Most of the people in the world are in a trance. They're in a consensual trance. But more and more are awakening. And it's programs like this, Vinny, the more that we can get out to the people and awaken them that they're in a trance so that they can get back their souls, activate their, their, their soul power, we can expose Hillary Clinton for what she is. We can expose Jeb Bush and the Bushes for what they are. We can expose the CIA and the Dracos for what they are. And incidentally, right now, there are tremendous battles going on in space as we speak. And the Dracos are getting whipped. And they're being driven off this planet. Is and, and all the, the things like the UK monarchy, their day is gone. All those people are being dr driven off. So that... so. 
so that uh, now the light forces are landing. We have the light forces are landing, and we're taking command of the planet again. So we are are winning. And the reason that we have been able to do this is that, in part, is that we've been able to do this research, which pinpointed the cause, pinpointed the cause and the source of these networks in the droplets, in the CIA, in 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 MK Alpha, in the Jesuits, in the Talmuds, and and uh, and tied into the transhumanist agenda, and that we're working with the interdimensional fleet, which as we speak is wiping out the Draco Reptilian and Orion Gray fleet. And so the corrupted monarchies, the Belgian monarchy, the Dutch monarchy, the UK monarchy, uh, the Vatican, all those negative forces, the, the USA corporation, which is under contract to the Dracos and has been such, and the Nazis around the world, which are under contract to the Dracos, are, 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 are toast because their power source is now being driven off the planet and the light forces are here and uh, uh, we are restoring soul power, human soul power, and we're restoring law and order. And that's, and that's the basic process that is occurring now and that's why all the facts of Hampstead Heath and, and the sexual ritual abuse hub of Hampstead are coming out and uh, all of the facts of the of uh, the the uh, pedophile networks of the Bushes and the Clintons are coming out of Prince Andrew of the UK family uh, I don't know you know in New Zealand you you you've got this dark prime minister i i don't know what's going on with that guy well he's uh, well he's called the prime minister oh okay. actually you know I, I you know he's he's so dark that he gives darkness a different name but anyway uh well uh, here's here's an ironic turn point for you he's worth like 50 million plus right and uh, also has m multiple uh, insider trading allegations while he's been acting as the prime minister with shares in the bank of america which new zealand is getting in debt to and then recently, a whole public outcry came out because everybody in the Member of Parliament were getting their money, uh, the amount of money they could get paid raised. And he's like, no, no, I won't stand for this. I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> and, he, and then he passes a law under urgency in one night, wiping out any uh, future um, extra you know, benefits for all the other MPs and then goes back to his $5 million mansion in Parnell uh, that he calls the house that Merrill built. For tea, you got to love that, Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen. John Key, go check it out. I'm making yeah. a documentary about, the, about John Key, the SOB. Some men are a son of the land, others are a son of the sea. But Mr Key is a son of a beach. We'll be right back. <laughs> what is the big deal about swearing to God in the first place? Why does swearing to God mean you're going to tell the truth? Wouldn't affect me. If they said to me, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God, I'd say, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you about as much truth as the people who wrote that Bible. How do you like that? <laughs> huh? Huh? Swearing to God is kid stuff. Swearing to God doesn't mean anything. Swearing on the Bible doesn't mean anything. You know why? Because Bible or no Bible, God or no God, if it suits their purposes, people are going to lie in court. The police do it all the time. All the time. Yes, they do. It's part of their job to protect, to serve, and to commit perjury whenever it supports the state's case. Swear it on the Bible is just one more way of controlling people and keeping them in line, and it's one more thing that holds us back as a species.
Do you realise every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue comes in three models, a household, portable, and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the VinnieEastwoodShow.com Assassination. You know what's interesting about assassination? Well, not only does it change those popularity polls in a big hurry, but it's also interesting to notice who it is we assassinate. Do you ever notice who it is? Stop to think of who it is we kill. It's always people who've told us to live together in harmony and try to love one another. Jesus, Gandhi, Lincoln, John Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, Malcolm X, John Lennon, they all said, try to live together peacefully. Bam! Right in the head. Apparently we're not ready for that. Yeah, that's difficult behavior for us. We're too busy thinking around, sitting around trying to think of ways to kill each other. Here's one we came up with. It's efficient, too. Genocide, you know? Killing large numbers of people simply because they don't look like you, they don't talk like you, and they don't have the same kind of hats you do. You ever notice that any time you see two groups of people who really hate each other, chances are good they're wearing different kind of hats. <laughs> Keep an eye on that, it might be important. Do you read me? Welcome back, oh, ladies and gentlemen. To the show that's all about feeding vegetables to extraterrestrials and not being credible, but totally incredible instead. And my very special guest is Alfred Labramont Weber, a godfather of exopolitics. Welcome back to the show, my friend. I don't know what I've done to make you disrespect me so much. <laughs> <laughs> And at least we're having a good time, you know. I mean, look, ladies and gentlemen, just because we're being exterminated doesn't mean we can't have a few laughs about it. Otherwise, what's the point of being killed? Well, at least that's my philosophy. I could be wrong. Maybe I'll regret it someday. <clears throat> but for now, I find it's a coping mechanism that is rather important, especially if you do plan to find out the real truth about things, behind things, underneath the rocks where you don't want to look. Trust me, nobody wants to look at the stuff. You look at it because you're compelled to. You have to. There's a need, a desire, something that is not complete without it. But is not, <laughs> when you come back out of it, you do change quite a lot. And your perspective on things change as well. I've been through this, Alfred's been through this, a lot of people have been through that. It's kind of like the five stages of grief. After you lose a loved one, you know, you get your anger, your depression, and all that other good stuff before finally getting into ah, acceptance. That you've got a moral obligation to do something. That you can't sit around just whinging about it all the time. That you actually need to let people know. That kind of realization, that kind of motivation to leave your ordinary daily life working for somebody else fulfilling somebody else's dreams and putting yours off indefinitely until the day they give you a cheap gold watch and a retirement village and you're so poisoned and sick that you can't even fulfill your dreams if you wanted to. Don't do it. The best advice anybody who's trying to inspire you is to tell you to turn off whatever you're listening to, even if it's this show. If you feel like you've heard enough so that you can start really doing something, turn off whoever it is, whatever it is you are listening to and watching and start creating it. You'll cross the Rubicon once you realize that you're spending more hours a day creating content than consuming the content of others. Alfred, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and those are very thoughtful and very meaningful and very inspiring words, Vinny. Um, 
and I think that they're exactly uh, the sort of insight that 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 people coming into this area uh, will will finally come to. Um, uh, and <clears throat> this is an area that that um, uh, I th I think is is really hidden in many many aspects of our current current culture. For example, in in the uh, interview uh, with CCN director Mel Vey, who uh, she spent as I mentioned, five years in the, Hems in, in the Hampstead Heath area. And, and she uh, emphasized the, the, um, the, the aspects of the Hampstead Heath area that are conducive to an interdimensional context of negativity and the attraction of negative and malevolent, malevolent entities. Uh, and she also noted the pr predominance around the Highgate Cemetery area with its history of sightings, again, of greys and reptilians. And this is something that goes back centuries. The roped-off pyramid area in Highgate Cemetery in its underground chamber, which is probably, she said, the area where many ritual sacrifices are held uh, and it's adjacent to where Bram Stoker wrote and set scenes from Dracula a classic novel about vampire ritual sacrifice and blood drinking so this is something that has been going on for centuries and now which is coming up in the mass media because we have a manipulatory species that has gotten control of and is under treaty with soulless power elements of our matrix, including uh, agencies of government like like the CIA, like I was the just NSA. Thinking, uh, that these uh, these people, these creatures. Uh, have the ability to transmute and distort things. So um, I'm wondering whether it's kind of like a, um, what, what they call a bait and switch. If you if you put out all the, inf I'm just theorizing, like taking okay. a stab in the dark here. Um, if you put out all the information about uh, Jimmy Savile, Rolf Harris, these uh, giant pedophile cults, blood drinking in Hollywood and all of that kind of thing, all at the same time. Now, it's a gamble. What if it actually works and pays off for them. What if you get an actual, instead of recoil and disgust of these things, you get a double tap. You get those who will love it and support it and be recruited into it, and those who will uh, be so afraid of it that they will not want to hear about it again kind of thing. And then you have the, the, the uh, third area, which is that those who see it and their souls are activated, and their heavy soul power is 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 activated, so that you you have what's called a stratification, so that souls are are stratified or layered into those which can withstand and survive against these malevolent entities versus souls who don't have that power. So it's a spiritual evolutionary test. And in, in the, along with the frequency ascension of our planet, this is really kind of a, a test for those souls who are really going to survive the process and move forward so, into ascension, and like a, a spiritual disease, like a uh, when, when they had Ebola in Africa, they would put you alone in a hut, and if you came out three days later, you're good. If you didn't, you did. Yeah, yeah, and 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 my faith is that the infrastructure of our time-space hologram, the 
because basically we're inside a video game. We're inside a virtual reality. We're inside a time-space hologram that is nothing but that is on parallel timelines and is a virtual reality. It's nothing but energy and frequencies. And, and what's real about it is our, is our underlying soul, which is anchored in a non-local dimension. Um, and these avatars are just like spacesuits, or, or they're like an avatar that you use in a virtual reality, like that movie, Avatar. Uh, and and uh, uh, so that now the, the infrastructure, which is so powerful because it's the power of the universe itself and of the interdimensional portal of the universe, that, that we have through that portal are coming now waves of unity consciousness of we are one, which has displaced the duality consciousness of I win, you lose, which is the basic consciousness of these ritual sacrifices. And you have the new holographic positive timeline. And only things which are consistent with the positive timeline gain traction. So that it seems to me that whereas in the times of Bram Stoker or even in the 20th century, uh, uh, you could get World War I off the ground by doing a false flag, by shooting the Archduke Ferdinand, and you know, then you'd have a war of cousins and all the, the uh, royal families of Europe were basically cousins in the same family and under Queen Victoria, and they just did a family false flag. And for satanic reasons, because they were all Satanists or Luciferians under Queen Victoria, they got a mass sacrifice going of 25 million to 100 million people. But it was a false flag. And the same thing with World War II, where uh, King Edward VIII, King George VI, his brother, and Adolf Hitler, their half-brother, they were all half-brothers. Adolf Hitler was the half-brother of King Edward VIII and King George VI. King George V was the father of Adolf Hitler. And it was all a big false flag. World War II was a big false flag just to create a ritual sacrifice of 100 million people to these Luciferian gods. Now, and uh, plus, right, right after it, John D. Rockefeller donated the land to build the UN on, and then the uh, former Nazi party member became the uh, Secretary General. And hey, presto, we've got Agenda 21 coming down the lines. I actually met him. I had cocktail parties with him. I met him at a cocktail party at the Unispace Conference in oh my 1982. God, and I, you know, and, and, and he's this tall guy, and, and he's a former na 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 Nazi, and, you know, and, 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 and you can just see all of the contradictions there. Now, they could do that. The 20th century and all of the years prior to December 21st, 2012, <coughs> They could pull that off on the old timeline. But now that the timeline has shifted, we're in the new frequency field and they can't get traction. And so that is what has occurred now. And that's why everything is just blowing up in their faces. Now, tomorrow is March 3rd, 3-3, <clears throat> the third day of the week, the third, the third month. We're in the third month, the third day of the third month, and Netanyahu, which is the representatives of the Talmudics, which is a sect that goes back to Babylon, which is based on ritual child sacrifice, and uh, 
what that sect wants to do is to get all the Jews, all of the um, all of the unconscious Jews, what we call porch brethren, back to Israel so that they can be sacrificed in a nuclear war. That's basically was the Rothschild vision when they set up Israel in 1948 uh, under false pretenses and displaced 1.5 <coughs> to 2 million Palestinians in their native land and put in their <coughs> Khazars that are Eastern Europeans that have nothing to do with Palestine. But it's a total false flag. Now, using <coughs> the Khazar corruption of the U.S. Congress, Netanyahu, as a Talmudic, Talmudic black magician, has set up a speech in the U.S. Congress to attempt to ignite a war with Iran as a pretext for a world war uh, to be the next sacrifice. However, it's mm -hmm. going to fail because the frequencies won't allow it. And, and uh, so we are witnessing now how the operation of the positive timeline is working because it's the same formula that they've used in 1948 when they had a blood moon, one of the tetra eclipses. Now on March 20th, 2015, they have one of the four tetra eclipses. Uh, these are blood moons of 2014, 2015. On March 20th and again in September, we have the last two of the four tetra lunar eclipses. These are blood moons that won't occur again for another thousand years. And these are planetary configurations that the Talmudic satanic forces have used to plan their war events uh, uh, to have their diabolical forces uh, uh, plan their sacrifices. And in the last series of blood moons in 1948, that's when Israel went in and displaced two million Palestinians in a genocide that we at the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal found Israel guilty of genocide in their displacement We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you go anywhere. Imagine a world with natural clouds, clean air, clean water, and natural food. Why in the world are they spraying? If you love your family, if you love your children, if you love our planet, it's time to get involved. In 2010, millions of people were awakened to the question of what? Now the next question that remains to be answered is, why in the world are they spraying an investigative look into one of the many agendas associated with chemtrail geoengineering programs, weather control? Why has our weather been changing? Are the long white lines in the sky changing our weather? Could there be a monetary and political agenda behind these damaging programs? Why in the world are they spraying? Order your copy today at www.whyintheworldarethespraying.com. Why in the world are they spraying? And if you control the weather, you're going to control the planet. It's that simple. The Ten Commandments. Here's my problem. Why are there ten? I think the list of commandments was deliberately and artificially inflated to get it up to ten. Here's what they did. About 5,000 years ago, a bunch of religious and political hustlers got together to try to figure out how to control people, how to keep them in line. They knew people were basically stupid and would believe anything they were told, so they announced that God had given them some commandments. Up on a mountain, when no one was around, God had given them the Ten Commandments. Why ten? Why not nine or eleven? I'll tell you why. Because ten sounds official. They knew if it was eleven, people wouldn't take it seriously. 
It's a political document artificially inflated to sell better. 10 is the basis for the decimal system. It's a decade at the top 10, the 10 most wanted, the 10 best dressed. So having 10 commandments was really a marketing decision. I don't like words that hide the truth. I don't like words that conceal reality. I don't like euphemisms. And American English is loaded with euphemisms because Americans have a lot of trouble dealing with reality. Americans have trouble facing the truth. So they invent a kind of a soft language to protect themselves from it. I'll give you an example of that. When I was a little kid, if I got sick, they wanted me to go to the hospital and see the doctor. Now they want me to go to a health maintenance organization. Smug, Greedy, well-fed white people have invented a language to conceal their sins. It's as simple as that. The CIA doesn't kill anybody anymore. They neutralize people. The government doesn't lie. It engages in disinformation. Israeli murderers are called commandos. Arab commandos are called terrorists. Contra killers are called freedom fighters. Well, if crime fighters fight crime and firefighters fight fire, what do freedom fighters fight? They never mention that part of it to us, do they? Never mention that part of it. No rules. No rules. No taboo topics. No taboo topics. No fear of doom. No fear of doom. We are. We are. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. Remember, remember the 5th of November. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. I got some so-called friends Smile right to my face All when my back is turned They like to bury me without a trace Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the show that's about being buried without a trace. It's the Vinnie Eastwood Show on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Four days a week, ladies and gentlemen, Monday through Thursday, if you happen to be stateside and if you happen to be in the shining jewel of the South Pacific with wonderful, wonderful fluoride in the water, New Zealand, then it's about four o'clock in the afternoon, bro. Seriously, from Tuesday through Friday, that's how the dateline works. I know, it sounds confusing. It took me about two years to get used to doing a show in another country's timeline. <clears throat> My very special guest is Alfred Weber. Welcome back. Thank you. Well, We have one well, final segment here, uh, which I like to usually preserve for self-promotion of some kind, because it's my belief that there's nothing shameful about shameless self-promotion. Good. Well, given that, uh, I was just about to launch into... Uh, some uh, self-promotion that actually is mutually beneficial for the human race. And what I did was about five years ago, I embarked on a project to map the omniverse. And what the omniverse is, you've got the universe, then you've got the multiverse, the multiverse was discovered about toward the end of the 19th century and is first named by the novelist and psychologist William James. And what the multiverse is, it's simply a term that is the collection of all the universes. And two scientists at Stanford have uh, recently come up with an estimate of the number of universes in the multiverse. And what they say is that the number is so large that the human mind cannot comprehend it. However, if you were to use, say, a computer with 12-point type to write out the number of universes in the multiverse, that number would be more than 260 million miles long. That's how large the number of universes in the multiverse is. So then what I noted was that there has there had not been a book written on the omniverse. So I wrote a book on the omniverse. And what the omniverse is, the definition of the omniverse is as follows. The omniverse equals the multiverse, i.e. all of the universes 
plus the spiritual dimensions. And what the spiritual dimensions are is the dimensions that of the of the interlife or the afterlife that contain all of the intelligent community, all of the intelligent civilization of souls, plus the spiritual entities, plus what we call God or source. Now, traditionally, all of that has been a matter of belief and not of science. But over recent years, especially, say, over the last 10 to 15 years, science and what we call science or scientific knowledge is simply where you have a uniform protocol and replicable results. And over the last 10 to 15 years, increasingly, or let's say more like 25 years, uh, science has been developing replicable data using uniform protocols about the intelligent civilization of souls, what is the nature of the soul, what is the soul in the intralife like, what is the intralife like, what do souls do between lives, how are souls created, what functions do soul have in the creation of all of the universes and the maintenance of the universes, and this is replicable scientific knowledge. You take seven or eight thousand cases and you find that it's the same answer. And it's not a matter of faith where you look it up in the Bible or some other given, given sacred text and say, yes, I believe that what happens after death is X. No. You know that what happens more 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 probably than not that what happens after death because you have a certain number of cases according to the scientific method that tell you this is what probably happens after death after bodily death also what we find out is that the spiritual dimensions which consist of the intelligence of, of the intelligent civilization of souls spiritual beings plus source or god together act to create and maintain all of the universes. And they do so because the universes are the venues for souls to incarnate into and gain spiritual soul development. That's why the universes are created. We are now Avatar Denise Eastwood, Avatar Alfred Weber, and Avatars of everybody listening in we are incarnating souls inside avatars here to gain soul development. That's why this is happening. We're inside a virtual reality. This is like a carnival ride. This is not real. <laughs> this is a carnival ride. And, but it's such a carnival ride and such a high technology. We're inside a machine that was designed by higher intelligence, which is the collective of all the intelligent civilization of souls, the spiritual beings of God. So it's a high intelligence that designed this virtual reality. But it's essentially a high-tech video game that we're in. And and so that puts a different spin on things. I, I came to that conclusion myself as well. Um, but the obvious question is, every game has a point. There's an end goal. There's a there's a medallion or something at the at the end of the game, or there's certain puzzles that you need to solve, or or there's a princess that you need to rescue. Every game has a purpose, a point, a clear winner, and a clear loser. What's the clear victory for us here in this game when there's seven billion people? And they've all got different lives and different forms of consciousness and they experience it subjectively. Right, right. These are excellent questions. And that and that so for example, it's not a so much of a clear winner, but prior to your life, you actually choose your life, you sample it, and then after your life, you have a life review 
with your guides and you see how much of what you expected to gain in your life by choosing that particular life you actually accomplished in terms of soul development. Did you actually slack off and just sit there and read and kind of just slacked off and not take all of the chances and not mm. really pushed it and, and you know squeezed as much out of the circumstances as you might have gotten i.e. Yeah. we have raw material here we can make as much of it as we can or we can slack off but then if we slack off when we pass over our guys are going to say what's the matter for you you're just going to have to go back <laughs> And yes, it's, it's, it's like game over. Would you like to retry? Here's, here's another 20 cent coin. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's, not that we, it's not that we win or lose. It's, it's that, you know, it, it's, 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 it's what do you want to make of yourself? And, and are you... Are you really I would, reaching? Well, I would argue that if you make nothing of yourself, then you kind of lost the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and so you know, so it is it is win or lose. Um, there's a clearly defined loser, but it doesn't clearly define a winner because everybody can win in their own way, and uh, the rules of the game bend all the time for people. Have yeah. you ever found yourself to be the exception to the rule? I have. My whole life, everybody else is like, oh, you're going this way. And I'm like, no, I'm going this way. And then they all wind up in, in, in deep crap and I'm sweet ass. But look, if, if, the number of, if the number of universes is so large that just to write it out, the number would be 260 million miles long, and that's universes. And in our galaxy alone, and there's 500 billion galaxies in our universe alone. Um, wait, 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 Alfred, don't you think it's a little bit centric uh, uh, thinking to think the entire multiverse and omniverse was created so that we could experience it through a video game format and out, and out come the, uh, the spiritual and the psionic energies of all the available universes in existence, including the spiritual ones, just by our actions? Or is that just like overburdening everybody and just going, okay, bro, this is your responsibility now. That's how many people have sacrificed their universes for your existence. Get off your ass, son. <laughs> I am going to send you a copy of my book, The Omniverse, which is the first book ever written on the omniverse. And we can well, have that discussion. All right, but unfortunately, we've come right to the end of the show, ending on a high note or, or an omni note, whatever, bro. It's the Vinny Eastwood Show on American Freedom Radio. Four nights a week, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out at the VinnyEastwoodShow.com. That's Vinny with a Y, because it's the most important question, and Eastwood isn't go ahead. Make my news. We'll see you again sometime. Be well. Administration. I heard about that one, and I, I don't. I don't know what it was. Uh, there's, there's, there's remarkably more UFO abductions in the United States than the entire rest of the world combined, like by far. And I heard one person uh, allege that that's because the treaty that the United States signed with the Greys included harvesting rights to the U.S. population. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 basically it, and that's why. Uh, uh, the U.S. has 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 had to suffer this, is because of uh, of these treaties that were signed in 1933 in Balboa, Panama, and uh, uh, out of those treaties, then which were linked up. Let me the guess. These treaties in, uh, that were signed in Balboa, they must have been about Rocky. Uh...
<laughs> I know that we're going to get into it. The last time you and I did a show, I think, Vinny, or one of the last times, we were both laughing so hard we could hardly talk. Because you, uh, you, you talked about the, Europe, the European Union, but you mispronounced it and you called it the European Union. And Something. Out, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and the, uh, the, the here we are ta talking about these. Here, here we are talk, talking about these these incredibly serious, heart wrenching problems. However, I have everything written down, so I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to let you do that to me tonight, Vinny, with your incredibly wry sense of of uh, humor. Put it that way. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you're not going to get caught up in the moment. Please. <laughs> One, a colleague of mine, Andrew D. Bashago, uh, had undertaken that on behalf of the Defense Advanced Project Research Agency. In 1971, he, he did a uh, third dimension, uh, a 3D chronovisor probe inside of a hologram and saw the encountered the uh, U.S. Supreme Court building, Washington, D.C., under 100 feet of brackish water. Similarly, another colleague of mine, Dr. Courtney Brown, in uh, 2010, assembled the largest uh, number of military-trained remote viewers in history in uh, 2010, and they were going to do just a regular study of what the effects of global warming were, thinking that, oh, well, we'll have a few less acreage of beach, beachfront property. And instead, they found in June 2013 a global coastal event that left the Sydney Opera House underwater. And along with all other coastal cities, including Washington, where they found the U.S. Congress directly across from the Supreme Court building underwater. Uh, none of these events occurred, and uh, Courtney Brown found that immediately prior to June 2013 that that event occurred, but it occurred in a different dimension because the catastrophic timeline uh, is no longer ruling in the dimension that we're inhabiting now, but rather a new positive timeline. So the equation positive future equals positive timeline plus unity consciousness is the equation that governs the, uh, one could call it virtual reality. Weber. <clears throat> Sorry. Welcome. How's the Weber down there? Uh, here we had a, a clear, bright, sunny, crispy day at 13 degrees centigrade in Vancouver, British Columbia. It was a wonderful day. No chemtrails. Everybody was celebrating. It was a banner day on the 2nd of March, 2015. And tomorrow, Netanyahu on the 3rd of March will fail at his attempt to ignite World War III. That's my prediction, because the positive timeline has landed. What do you mean by the, uh, the positive timeline has landed? Is there like a couple of timelines running congruent throughout history or whatever, and certain ones are full of scumbags and the success of scumbaggery and certain <laughs> are the opposite? Well, uh, almost could be. Uh, people can go to our, our website at positivefuture.info, and there you'll see the positive future equation that uh, has emerged from uh, data, and the positive future equation is positive future equals positive timeline plus unity consciousness. And what we've been able to note is a pattern that emerged after December 21st, 2012. And what occurred then is that a new holographic timeline, a positive timeline, uh, emerged permanently to uh, displace the former catastrophic timeline that was based on duality consciousness, I win, you lose, uh, that was the ruling timeline for this time-space hologram that we're in. And that's why so many of the plans of uh, the, the matrix powers 
uh, namely uh, World War III, namely uh, uh, the you know Ebola pandemic, namely their depopulation program to attempt to get the population down from seven billion to 500 million as set out in the Georgia Guidestones is failing. And it's failing because it's unity consciousness, we are one, that is the prevailing frequency under uh, in our time-space hologram. We know now that uh, uh, our universe uh, is actually a time-space hologram composed of multiple timeline, timelines here at our third density, which is the density that we inhabit. Uh, we're incarnating souls non-locally based in the afterlife dimensions and incarnating here in our avatars as Vinnie Eastwood, Alfred Weber, and everybody else listening or watching this show. So uh, uh, through great grace, the, interdim the interdimensional portal of our universe uh, as of December 21st, 2012, began broadcasting uh, waves of unity consciousness and the timeline uh, shifted from a catastrophic one, which would have predicted World War III, it would have predicted a global coastal event, which three different uh, 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 remote viewings, one a chronovisor, uh, uh, Chronovisor Pro by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, had undertaken in 1970 reality that we're in. It's as though, uh, Vinny, that on uh, December 21st, 2012, somebody changed the video card of the video game that we're in. And we used to be in a video game called War, Disease, Crime, and Poverty. And somebody changed it to Landing Paradise on Earth. And most of the 7 billion people still think that we're on war, disease, crime, and poverty, but the video game has changed. It's landing paradise on Earth. So everybody's scrambling to try and figure out, are we in heaven or hell? Well, objectively, scientifically, our infrastructure is that of landing paradise on Earth. And uh, uh, the, it's, it's a struggle because all the trillions of dollars of forces that have spent three trillion dollars building underground bases to protect them from uh, all sorts of catastrophes that aren't going to happen are still trying to make them happen, but they can't get it off the ground. Kind of like that relationship with that girl you really liked in high school, but it's just not going to work out, son. I think so. You know, it, it, it just is not in this timeline. And, and uh, that is why all of the pedophilia and ritual uh, child sacrifice and ritual ch trial trafficking networks are now getting busted and now being exposed. Everywhere from, the, uh, from where they originate, which is the, the, uh, the, the contracts between the Nazis and the Dracos and the Orion Greys, which were signed in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, uh, and then they were signed with the Americans in the Roosevelt. I, I, 